on live I wouldn't be surprised if you don't originally launched in 2011 on live was a company that sold game consoles that did all their processing on an external server this was one of the first attempts to bring cloud computing to the consumer market and much like any other technology that's ahead of its time it failed however before on live gave us laggy cloud-powered gaming in 2011 HP bought the corporate world cloud-powered computing in 2007, and they were very successful in doing so. What OnLive attempted was ambitious. They were trying to stream full games to users hundreds of miles away from their servers. HP's idea was completely different. The thin client was built for the business world, meaning all they had to stream was documents and files from a server within the same building. That means that not only did the thin client have the benefit of having its server in the same building, but also high latency wouldn't even be noticeable to users since it's only streaming documents and files. The non-existent need for powerful hardware in the thin clients allowed HP to make these computers small and cheap. So cheap in fact that without business subsidies, most thin clients sold for $499 per unit and $249 per unit with subsidies. Those price points were unheard of in 2007 and companies were quickly buying large quantities of thin clients for their employees to use. Companies encouraged their employees to welcome the adoption of thin clients because of their one selling point. They're small, and they're almost the same as using a normal computer for word processing. Companies released really bad training videos to employees to ensure them that using a thin client was really like using a normal computer and that they should welcome them because they are a great thing. Hi folks, it's Priya and I'm here with Dwayne, technology analyst with IMTS. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about thin clients. So over here on the left hand side we have a regular workstation which you use along with everyone else in the ministry. That's right, that's the big thing on my desk. The big bulky thing, right. And over here on the right hand side is the thin client. Wow, that's so much smaller. How does that even work, Dwayne? Basically it works on the same concept as a regular workstation. You plug in your monitor, your network cable, your keyboard and your mouse, but there are some differences. Okay. One is you don't have a hard drive. And two is you don't have a CD, DVD drive. Okay, and that's what makes it so much smaller. Exactly. Okay, but where's my data? No hard drive. I'm a little worried. <laughs> exactly. Your thin client does not have a hard drive, and you're not supposed to be saving your data on the hard drive to begin with. Thanks so much for the time and for showing us around these, Dwayne. I really appreciate it. It's been my pleasure. Since thin clients have been in production for 10 years, many companies have cycled them out. So now you can find them in the used market for very cheap. I can go on eBay right now and find lots of thin clients for $20 and under. These are probably the cheapest computers you can currently buy. Since these thin clients are so cheap, I decided to buy one and see if they could still be usable today. My budget was $25, which is actually more than you should ever spend on a thin client. I ended up spending $24 on this 2009 thin client and a power adapter. Removing the upper casing reveals the Intel Atom N280 processor, a 4GB RAM stick, and 8GB of flash storage. And that's where we get into the main problem with these thin clients. Few had storage surpassing a measly 16 gigabytes. Thin clients were designed to stream their documents and even operating system from a server, meaning SSDs are only useful for cache files and other temporary files, and those files are not that big, so you don't need a big SSD. This is how expenses were cut when building these thin clients. No powerful CPU or large SSD was needed if you're just going to stream everything anyway. Since I wasn't about to be sensible for once and actually use things for what they're designed for, I decided to shoehorn Windows 7 onto this poor thin client by using a 64 gb flash drive as internal storage. Then I installed Steam in quite a few games. This was really painful. Windows 7 took five hours to do its first time boot up, Steam took four hours to install, and most games took around 30 minutes to an hour to launch. Now don't get me wrong, this is through no fault of the thin client itself. The main bottleneck is the really bad flash drive I used to launch Windows 7. If you were to use the SATA port in the thin client, things would be much faster. The thing is, I don't have the money for that. So anyway, I thought I'd run quite a few games on the thin client. So get ready for suffering, and here are the benchmarks.
As I usually say in videos, that went better than expected. The thing is most people who are going to buy a thin client aren't going to use it for gaming. People typically buy these used for media centers and living rooms and for lightweight servers. And I can say from experience, those uses make far more sense than using it as a gaming box. And to me, using a $10 thin client as a media center makes the most sense. You can easily fit a TV optimized version of Linux onto the internal flash storage and use it as a Netflix and just general TV box. Now what am I planning to do with my thin client? I'm not sure. I'll probably use it as a server and that'll be about it. Anyway, that'll be it for this video. Make sure to join my 32 megabytes Discord to talk to me and other 32 megabytes subscribers. I'm on there in an unhealthy amount. Have you had experience with a thin client? Leave your comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.